Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2 and the Island Treasure Zoo. Oh, I am so excited to be here. I mean, look at it. Look at it. It's so cute. It's such a tiny little zoo and it has so much potential to grow. <gasps> look at everybody. Oh, did you enjoy? Oh, hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Are you enjoying just walking through my endangered species fountain? Thank you. Thank you for breaking my immersion, sir. I hope you're happy about that. Oh my gosh, that was kind of hilarious. All right, well, let's walk around a little bit. Oh, look, there's our couscous. And they're going to have their babies soon. So if you guys remember, the couscous are the marsupials from the very, very northern tip of Australia and up on New Guinea, I believe it is. I'm not totally familiar with the islands of Oceania, so if I get it wrong, please feel free to offer the correct solution down below. But these are marsupials, and they're only pregnant for like a little less than a week. I think it's 13 days from when they mate to when they have their baby, but that's because their baby is a tiny little itty bitty Itty bitty teensy weeny little pink thing of flesh. Ah, I am busy talking about these things, you guys. Uh, all right, so we have a challenge, but anyway, itty bitty tiny little pink thing that's super tiny and it sits inside of the female's little pouch until it gets big enough to come out. I love marsupials. I think they're really cool. The only marsupials we have here in North America are the possum, and it's also really cool, but I don't think I have one in Zoo Tycoon 2. I'll have to ask Ben if there's such a thing. Anyway, we have a challenge today, you guys. You have the opportunity to obtain an animal that has been rescued from an illegally run, run animal mill. Oh, we are so, we are going to take care of it. The species has not been disclosed and you, it will cost you about $3,800 to ship to your factory or facility. While it is likely to, that the animal is in the low risk category, there is also a good chance that it is vulnerable or endangered, in which case it would be a valuable acquisition. Should you accept this opportunity, your created animal will be delivered to the area near the front gate. Okay, we're definitely doing this because this is an opportunity to do an animal rescue. What type of animal rescue? I have no idea. While you could have... Challenge one. While you could have adopted an animal of this species at a lower cost, this animal is much better off in your care than that of the animal, animal mill, and your guests will still enjoy the new addition. Okay, so we spent some money on this guy, and who is it? Where is it? Where's the animal? Where is... Okay, if you have trouble finding an animal when it doesn't show up near your crate, the best thing you can do... It's a Nile crocodile! <laughs> Oh my gosh, and he is literally at the front gates. Nile Crocodile at the front gates. Oh my goodness, and we need a bigger restroom. People need restrooms, and we have a Nile Crocodile. Oh my gosh, I wonder. Do we have a saltwater crocodile? We need to check if we have salties of, like, crocodiles. I, I know there's tons of crocodiles at the Nile, and there's tons of crocodilians throughout, like, Asia. There's some amazing ones that actually, like, dig their own little holes to hide in when it's the middle of, like, the really dry season. But I always think of saltwater crocodiles first thing when I think of crocodiles. So let's go ahead. I want to just take a quick glance in our giant pile of animals. Cougar. Mugger, 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 mugger. Indian, the mugger is the one that digs a hole and hides in it. So Nile crocodiles are the only ones that are showing up. It doesn't have saltwater crocodiles, even though I do believe the salties are the biggest in the world when it comes to crocodilians. I am I'm pretty sure about that. If I'm not right, then I apologize. That's always a good point to check your sources, you guys, because I am not 100% sure. But maybe we're going to pretend this is a saltwater crocodile male. It has been brought to us to take, a, like, have a nice, safe home here. Um, and where on earth should I put it? Should I put him over in this corner so he can just kind of chill over here? I think I will. I think we're going to put like the Nile crocodile, we'll put him down here. We might have like a little fish tank of some sort of coolness right here or something like that. And then I want my, my uh, koalas maybe? Then I want my platypus somewhere. Maybe we'll have Nile crocodile and then you can come down a little bit further and see the platypus. All right, that's what we're going to do. And I actually really love these safari fences, but I think a Nile crocodile could probably break through that. So we're going to go with the endangered window fence. Um, should I give the gap in between the zoo wall? No, I'm not going to do a gap between the zoo wall because this is a small zoo, if you guys remember. So it's a medium sized map, uh, smaller than our normal maps, so that we can try to prevent any crashing issues we could possibly have. So I'm not going to make it too huge. All right, and we're going to do this. And actually, this is a nice way to do it. So then he'll have like all this space right here. Yeah, that should be plenty of room. Yeah, 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 that should be plenty of room. The crocodilians need lots of room and they do have lots of territory normally, but they're also kind of, mm, lazy is not the right word? 
you know, they're reptiles. They've got a lot of processing of the food to do, <laughs> which means a lot of basking in the sun to help bring their body temperature up so that they can metabolize their food. That's not just a joke. They really do need to get their, their temperatures up. They really do need to be able to have what, the heat to be able to pull the heat into their body and keep them going. Though crocodiles, I think they have something. I am vaguely remember reading an abstract on a scientific paper that talked about how crocodiles have something that makes it so that they can really retain some of their heat pretty well. And I think it's their size, kind of like marine iguanas. Their size can actually help them not generate their own heat per se, but really sustain their own heat a lot longer than smaller reptiles. So again, that's another check your sources thing, but I have a niggling suspicion that that is probably true. So we're going to put him over here, and then I think that's going to let us put down the uh, like reclusive platypus. And I actually have an idea for the platypus. We're kind of going to make, I think I'll do like some plants really thickly right here so that you have to walk through a little gated area, walk in here, and then the platypus enclosure will be right over here. And it will be a very shy, reclusive little creature. So if you want to come and look at the platypus, then you're going to have to like come and walk through like a bunch of plants and everything. And there'll be a path right here. In fact, I can get the path put down now. Oh, it's so exciting. I love rescuing animals. So why on earth somebody would be like keeping a Nile crocodile at an animal mill? For shame. For shame. Any kind of animal at an animal mill. Deeply for shame. But like a Nile crocodile? Like what are you thinking? Who is really going to have, well, I guess if you are running an animal mill, you really don't care who would have the proper facilities to take care of an Isle Crocodile, unfortunately. All right, so let's do this and come on, pull down the path just a teensy bit more. Whoops. And there we go. And there we go. I like it. And then we'll put some plants over here and we'll put the path down here. And here's what I'm thinking about. So we'll have a spot right here where you can enter and walk through. And here you can see our lovely platypus. We'll have a educator over here as well. There we go. Maybe even some viewing platforms, some benches at the back. And this will be where you can kind of walk through the big pile of plants. Yes, so here's where the pile of plants will be on either spot over here. And speaking of which, we have some perfect plants to pick from. I wish we had more plants though. I love how you guys are like laughing in the comments because you're like, oh boy, what's Siri gonna do with all her plants? I don't know, it's so hard. It's so hard, you guys. All right, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna use some of these bamboo, but once I put these bamboo down, they're down forever because these bamboo are kind of glitched. So they're always worth more than what it costs you. Whoops. No, I didn't want to pause. I wanted to undo. There we go. They're always worth more than what it costs you to put down. And that's kind of cheaty pants. So we're going to try to avoid that. But I think that it's just the perfect filler for creating the barrier that I kind of want to have right here. So put that there. That over here. Maybe this here. And this here. There we go. And big old giant bamboo plant. So cool. Another giant one right there. You can do a tall skinny one right there. So that will hopefully be a neat little entrance right there. We'll put down some ferns and things on the bottom once we have access to ferns. Denying me my access to plants. It hurts so much. Oh man, and I'm gonna have to wait till I have a three wide arch to be able to put over that. Darn. And I think it's gonna be a little while before I have- <gasps> No, my three wide arch plan. Oh, I'm gonna have to like expand this. How did I, how did I get it so wrong? I could have sworn. Is it this one? Well, this one will have to do. Paradise Arch, you're here. You're gonna be you're gonna be the link between the worlds right here. So we'll leave the little paradise arch right there. I forgot we have the endangered species arches now. Um darn, how on earth did I get this wrong? It is three wide, isn't it? It is three wide, not two. That opens up every zone. Hmm. Well, I'll start replacing everything with the the endangered species arches because I know I use them a lot, but I love them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's all I have to say to that. I love them. I, I am guilty as charged. All right, well, we'll play with arches more in a little bit. Now it's time to set up the animal exhibits. So Nile Crocodile, how can we make you happy? Now we do have the mod installed where it doesn't matter what type of terrain, what type of biome we have down, the animals don't care, they don't mind. So I think what we're gonna do here, Boreal Forest, um, maybe a little bit of Boreal Forest? Hmm, 
No, not quite. Let's go with a beach. Saltwater crocodiles. You know, saltwater. Maybe make it look mangrovey. Beach and surf. Maybe. I think we'll make it look like a mangrove forest with some grasses and some surf and a really big area. I think most of the water we'll put at the back, perhaps. So then water will all be right here, shallow water. Now a crocodile should be pretty happy. And then I think we need a little bit of deep water too. All right, and then we come in and it's really easier to just like put down a little bit of the deep water like this. And then to come in with the actual like tools. There we go. Here we go. Like the actual tools of flattening terrains and things like that. Let's pick up our Nile crocodile. You're going to come over here to smooth out the rest. So along the back, it's going to be, whoops. Wow. I didn't even know I can do that. Hopefully it won't escape right there. Along the back, it's going to look like that, but you also want to try to give the animals like some good variation in how deep their water is. And then it, to make it look nicer, you could do kind of a gradient like this. You see? Maybe I can fix this. Oh, I almost fixed it. So I'm going to call that good. There's some progress right there too. All right. And now we need to make this guy happy with some common broom plants and some other things, some little thistles. What else would make him happy? Some umbrella acacias. Well, we're pretending you're a saltwater crocodile, my friend. So, cause they eat the same things. It's just going to be fish both ways. So we'll have lots of fish kind of lining along the edges and oh, we'll give him a little beef shank. We'll give him a couple little beef shanks as a little present for welcome. I'm glad you're not at the, the horrific animal like mill anymore. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put down some mangrove trees and things like that. If it's going to tell me, I think it's just going to give me like wetlands options. Yeah, wetlands options for any of the mangrove pieces. Let's see, can I not put these? What, you guys can't go in water? Wimps, let's see. These guys are native to Southeast Asia. These white mangroves are apparently native to Central America and the Caribbean. But the cool thing is it doesn't really matter where they're native to most of the time. This is just a plain old mangrove tree. I actually like these ones a lot. So we'll put some of these ones in. The really cool thing is it really doesn't matter where the plants are from because if you go to most any zoo, it's usually a mixture of native plants that look very similar so that both the guests and maybe any of the quirky animal desires that the animals might have are satisfied. Usually a lot of native plants that just look similar to exotic plants because that's much safer than introducing exotics or it is a bunch of exotics and everybody is hunky dory and just fine with it because everybody does just well. Like it's, it's not a big deal to mix in other plants from other places because if you go to most exhibits like if you look at my gecko's tank it's a lot of like temperate indoor plants or a lot of snake plants a lot of things that you would not find in new caledonia and that's fine because the point is for the plant to suit the purpose that the animal needs it for not that the plant is the same plant native most of the time that's totally fine so don't worry don't freak out people always freak out and they're like siri how dare you how dare you give that crocodile like mangrove trees, even though we're pretending it's a saltwater crocodile. And that's just silly, you guys, don't worry, don't worry. All right, so let's see. Maybe some cute little tiny water plants. Maybe some little lotus. Uh, ooh, look at this palm tree. This little palm is adorable. I kind of want to put a few of them like around here. Oh, it's so cute, look at it. Oh my gosh, I love him. I love him a lot. Oh, he's so pretty. All right, that should satisfy me on those guys. Um, I actually wouldn't mind some wetlands logs kind of sprinkled around. Because I always think of like logs and things like that in ponds because that's where all the turtles tend to hang out around here. I don't know where turtles tend to hang out around where you guys are from, but that's where they hang out around here. Um, then we can also do like little wetland tufts of grass. I could put a few of these guys down just to kind of spruce the area up a teensy bit. And I don't really need lilies or anything like that. I kind of want to just leave it, leave it just like this. All right. I will put a few of these guys down here though, because I think that these are some really lovely little aquatic grass plant pieces. There we go. 
and we'll give him like a little spot he can kind of rest in and rocks because crocodiles will often swallow rocks to give them like a little bit of balancing in the water or help them to digest their food so he should have water food should be good we're gonna release him and we're going to rename him and call him saltwater croc so we'll call him old salty and we're gonna say he is a rescue that we have brought into our zoo. So now we're gonna zip away from the splashing water. Hopefully our educator, Albadorus, <laughs> oh my gosh, what a name, will be able to educate people about, yay, look at us, now we've got more stars. Hopefully people will be able to educate, or be educated by our educator about the awesomeness of saltwater crocodiles, because look at him. Oh, he's fantastic. Did he eat that, that thing? No, he's just thinking about it. Are you going in the water, my friend? What do you think about the water? Okay, I'll get out of your way. He wouldn't really mess with us when we're in guest mode. Oh, is he drinking? Yes! So now we know that he's able to drink the water just fine. And this looks like a beautiful exhibit for him, in my personal opinion. So we should see plenty of people wandering over to check out what he's up to pretty soon. Guests need more bathrooms. Let's check if we have larger bathrooms, because that actually is like a critical, very important thing that we should probably take care of right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the donation box right here. And then we'll go ahead and get ready for where our platypuses are going to be, like right here. Let's see, is that where I should have the donation box? No, probably right there. Oh, look at him go. He's climbing in his little water area. It looks really nice, if you ask me, kind of sparse. But crocodile doesn't need much. Doesn't need much at all. Oh, did it just leave a little? It did. Well, that's a very quaint little crocodile poo. So we'll go ahead and we'll clean that up. Oh gosh. All right, so he should be okay. I think he's coming over to snag some food right now. Oh, he's just walking around. So actually he's just exploring. Cool, he's having a good old time. And that kid just came by to watch him. So, oh, what does he think? Going to view animals? Come on, Gustav Moon, what a name. And what does this little kid think about the new guy? Oh, this little kid is really bored. We need to entertain him. He's got a lot of money on him. He wants to see reef mantas. Now we could probably pull off some reef mantas here. He likes to see the kangaroo looking at the salt lake. He's been looking at the fountains. And what does Gustav Moon think about our new, our new crocodile who's having a good old time splashing around in the water? There we go, old Salty seems pretty happy. Yay, and what does he want to see? The Amur catfish, so I'll remember that. All right, so people seem to be enjoying our, our new saltwater crocodile, so that makes me really happy. All right, now this place is looking pretty henpecked, if you ask me. <laughs> Look at the dirt, Look at it. It's just it's just kind of sad looking, it really is. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, so I really would love to cover the whole place in some more trees, or at least make it look a little nicer. Why has the spotted couscous been put into his crate? How did he get out? What is this? The Species Diversity Fund has created a program to reward zoos that can prove they, are, they have happy, well-adjusted animals from a wide variety of different species. If you can take three photos of different animals exhibiting specific behaviors, the Species Diversity Fund will give you a specimen of a species you don't already have in your zoo. These particular The particular photos they want to see are an emperor penguin doing a preening walk, one okapi playing chase with another, and a Nile crocodile blowing bubbles in the water. Oh man, I only have one of those creatures, but the other two are not, I mean, I guess, I guess technically you could consider Antarctica an island, but that's going a little too far for this. So I'm going to turn down that challenge just for now. And let's go ahead and the last thing we'll do today is check on those restrooms. <laughs> Because if there's anything we have learned in our many, many, many long times, long, long seasons of doing Zoo Tycoon 2, it's that you have to take care of your guest bladders. Don't take care of your guest bladders and you aren't taking good care of your guests. All right, so it looks like we have a restroom we can use. Let's move everybody out of the way. Then we're going to remove these restrooms. I really hope that whoever was in there is okay. We didn't just check them out to like the, the rubbish bin or something. And we're gonna put this restroom down. It is a modded restroom, but you know what? I think you should be able to build a large restroom right off the bat because it just makes sense to me. There she is, she's okay. All right, so we've got lots of people coming. This is the large bathroom. So I'm gonna call it like the couscous bathroom. Couscous uh, refreshment 
understand. That sounds too weird. Couscous bathroom. There we go. And now it can hold up to four people at a time. And you know what? I have been at zoos where it's like the first thing you want to do when you get there is like or go to the bathroom because you've been driving for like two or three hours to get there. So I can really appreciate a well laid out zoo. So can these guests. Look at them. They're much happier now. So they're happy. Let's see if there's any trees or plants or other things I want to put down. Ooh, that's a kapok tree, all right. I want to put down like right here. Uh, New Guinea palm. Maybe, because these are island trees and we are trying to celebrate like the island life right here. So, oh man, this is actually a really pretty tree. Wow, I'm going to put one over here. What the heck is it? I don't know, but it's gorgeous. I like it. Um, And then I think, wow, that's a huge tree. That's a huge tree too. This is a giant bush. And then maybe this tree. Oh my, there's so many trees now. <laughs> I'm so much happier. There's so many trees. Okay, I'm going to put down some palm trees, I think. Kind of sprinkled around. And already, already things are looking more inviting, if you ask me. Because everything is better with a few trees. So I'll even put one over here, perhaps? Yes, to let our guests kind of walk over this way. And we'll figure out kind of decorating the rest of the zoo. We'll accept some new challenges. I like these trees. They're actually really nice. I might start sprinkling them down in more places, like remove this one perhaps. It's not the most attractive tree. It was just what I was going for. And we've had our 100th guest. Yay, 100th guest to the new zoo already. That's awesome. All right, and I kind of like how this tree looks like it's reaching out beyond it's little tiles, like it's growing into the tiles. It makes the zoo look nice and old, even though we're brand new. Even though we're brand new. All right, so things are going pretty well. We're starting to figure out a pattern for what kind of plants to put down so that we can have a nice area that looks like, let's see, maybe these daisies? These daisies are actually really cute. And they actually mix with the monstros pretty well. Gosh, maybe we will use these daisies. But yeah, we're figuring out a nice pattern on how to decorate the zoo as well. So we'll have to see what happens next time, including perhaps the birth of the baby couscous, if they're going to be born and work or not. And we will start adding in our platypus because we now officially have the area prepared for them. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.